Hi, fellow seekers. With the Lisa Meitner script now topping 8,000 words, I felt I needed a short vid to tide people over. Unfortunately, the topic I chose, newsworthiness notwithstanding, is far more complex than I first thought. My general rule when tackling purely scientific subjects is to wrangle it until I can understand it, on the assumption that, if I can understand it, my audience can understand it. After a few days of headaches and self-flagellation, I think I have at least a workable idea of what's going on. But please don't see this as a science paper. Okay. Disclaimer done. Somewhere, deep under the Antarctic ice, something is emitting radio waves. We don't know what. We don't know why. And more frustratingly still, we haven't been able to replicate it. Well, I say is emitting. One of the facts of this story that news outlets have chosen to obscure is that it is not new. It actually dates back to 2006 and the ANITA project, the Antarctic Impulsive Transit Antenna, an array of 24 radio antennas placed on a helium balloon and flown between 30 and 39 kilometers above Antarctica. Specifically, it applies to ANITA-1, which flew between 2006 and 2007, and ANITA-3, which flew between 2014 and 2015. ANITA's job was to find not radio waves, but neutrinos, those ever-elusive subatomic ghosties that have proven a perpetual thorn in physics' side since they were first proposed nearly a hundred years ago. The universe has a lot of neutrinos, about 10 million for every electron. And unlike electrons, they're not tied to anything. At any one time, your body is being bombarded by about 700 million neutrinos, all traveling at near the speed of light. But because they barely interact with anything, you have not and will never notice any of them. Since neutrinos can plow through a light year of lead, let alone a cloud of interstellar gas, Without disruption, they make exceptionally good observational media, since, on the spectacularly rare occasions when they do interact with something, at least enough to be detected, they are fairly easy to trace back to their points of origin. Antarctica proves to be a particularly good fishing spot for neutrinos due to something called the Ascarian effect. When a very high-energy subatomic particle, or talking approaching the energy of a baseball thrown by a pitcher, interacts with ice, it can create Cherenkov radiation, the light equivalent of a sonic boom, when light travels faster than itself. This radiation manifests as radio waves, which can be analyzed to determine their origin. The vast majority of these signals either come from directly below the horizon, right where ice meets air, or from above, indicating a cosmic ray hitting the atmosphere. What made the signals detected in those fateful ANITA-1 and ANITA-3 runs so special was that they appeared to be coming not from just below the surface, but from the core of the Earth. The current team, headed by Stephanie Whistle, Associate Professor of Astronomy and Astrophysics at Penn State University, estimates that to have appeared at such an angle, roughly 30 degrees, they would have to have traveled between 6 and 7,000 kilometers, roughly the radius of the Earth, to reach the surface. Neutrinos, as I said, can do that just fine, but radio signals? Not so much. Radio signals gradually lose energy as they travel through rock. To have manifested with such energy as they did, they would have to have occurred ten times in a row. And that's the puzzle. No one can figure out how this happened. But Anita wasn't the only neutrino catcher out there. The Ice Cube project at the South Pole and the Pierre Auger Observatory in Argentina have also been reeling in, and the new team attempted to replicate those odd results by going through 15 years of Pierre Auger data. The Pierre Auger is the largest such net ever cast, at 3,000 square kilometers, and, after sifting through over a decade of results, the team found nothing. At least nothing outside predicted statistical noise. The one thing the team can be certain of after coming through the data, is that whatever caused the anomalous radio signal, it wasn't neutrinos. 
This has led astronomers to suggest new and theoretical particles, including that perennial crutch for the perplexed, dark matter. In astronomy, when faced with the nonsensical, you really have only one option. Try again with a better telescope. And that's what astronomers plan to do. Pueo, the payload for ultra-high energy observations, is essentially an even more sensitive ANITA, a balloon-based radio detector that will soon be soaring over Antarctica's frozen wastes, cross-checking the findings of its dimmer-eyed sibling. Whatever force may lie dormant beneath Antarctica's ice, one hopes that the sonorous cries recorded by our instruments do not herald its awakening. Or it might just be a glitch. Who knows? <laughs>